the landholder really needs to know is first you've got to have a reliable water supply of the right quality. There might be multiple sources of those and then you need to be able to set up infrastructure to be able to access that water reasonably. In terms of uh, stock water, uh, the quality is really important. If you've got poor quality water and the stock are drinking it, you're actually going to make them go backwards. They're not going to thrive. Now we need to manage our water properly too, so we want to make sure we're getting water that's sustainable and realistic. The main sources here on farms is the bores that people access water from, or overland flow, or riparian rights. Riparian rights is where you've got frontage to rivers. In the stock water world, you've got a right, if you overlie an aquifer, you've got a right to that water, or if you front a river, you've got the right to that water, as long as it's a true frontage. Sometimes the boundary doesn't always go to the river, in which case you might not be allowed to access the water. If the property overlays an aquifer, then they've got a stock and domestic right, but it can only be stock and domestic, you're not allowed to use it for other things. Bores need to be situated in a suitable aquifer, in other words, a source that holds water and also releases water. To find that, you often have to do exploratory drilling. You must have a licensed driller drill the hole and you must get a works approval before a driller even comes on the place. That's a requirement legally. Then you have to find one that's going to be giving you the water at the flow rate and the quality you want. Once you've got that, the bore needs to be constructed properly to do it. And the bore is usually just a casing. It can be plastic, it can be metal. Where the aquifer is, it's got holes cut into it so the water can get into the bore and it's got to be big enough for a pump to be able to put down inside that bore and lift the water up. Normally then you want the bore to have a concrete head structure so that it stays firm. It won't sink, it won't move. On this farm, it's quite a good bore. It's uh, sunk at a low point in the farm near a water course. The bore itself is only about 40 metres deep and the, uh, the standing water level is only about 12 metres below the ground. This particular one has also got solar power, which is terrific because it doesn't need to rely on mains power and it's cheap. On this particular farm, it's also got mains power backup. So if something happens with the solar or you get a cloudy days, whatever it might be, you've got the backup to be able to pump the water up. In this particular property, the bore can deliver a flow rate of about 14,000 litres per day, which is ample for the stock here, as long as it can pump it. If there's not enough pump by solar, the mains just kicks in. In both cases though, you need to have a tank with sufficient capacity because if the solar isn't operable, or if you get a blackout from the mains power, you don't want then your stock to suffer. It might take a few days. So we would normally say for solar only, you want to have a tank that's going to give you about a five days supply. Mains power, you want to say three days supply because it might take that long to get things fixed up. Springs occur mostly where you've got a little bit of undulating topography. They're not really on flat ground. And a spring is really just a false water table sitting above the main water table with an impervious layer under it. And it means there is a body of water there that you can tap. And sometimes it does come out the side of a hill, which is very nice. The flow rate is not as great as people think, and there can be water quality issues. A scheme is where maybe one bore is supplying a number of landholders. They all pay for the installation, the maintenance, the operating of it. And then there needs to be a distribution network by channels or pipe work. It needs to be clear who owns what, and who's also going to manage and regulate to be sure nobody takes more than they should. Now all that has to be internally set up in the scheme. It's its own little legal entity and the due diligence is very often the legal structures. Rainwater is pretty pure, it's not been in the soil, it's got good quality. If you've got good roof area, don't waste it. When it comes to drought time, that's sometimes the only source of water you've got. And even in drought, you might get a storm. If you catch it, you've got it. You've got drinking water, you've got house water, and you might have some of some stock as well. So a drought does show where poor siting and construction has occurred. People are more interested in doing the job properly as a consequence of the drought. And it does cost more, but I would describe it as good value. And now that the drought has passed for the moment, now's the time to do it. You haven't got pressure, you haven't got stress, you can do a well-planned job, get in there and do it now.